Welcome to this session on global solidarity, a conversation with Eden's international alumni. I am Mary Schaller Bloffus. I serve as the Vice President for Institutional Advancement, and I love ministry in a global setting. And so I am thrilled to have been able to host this conversation with Reverend Dr. Damianti Niles. Dr. Niles, good afternoon. Good afternoon or morning or wherever it is where you are. I'm so glad you are joining us. Um, it is a privilege to do this with my colleague and sister Mary. Like her, we were both shaped and formed by the global conversations we've had with our brothers and sisters. I have to say this recording was one of the great honors of the work I do uh, and to be uh, so Mary it's told you that she's the vice president of advancement I spend time as uh, the interim academic dean and professor of constructive theology what she didn't tell you is both of us are global world Christianity scholars and we lo love the conversations we have with our brothers and sisters around the world, because that is where we grew. That is where we all grow in those conversations. And um, the conversation that we had the privilege of being part of that you are about to hear, I will say with no bias whatsoever is probably one of the best things of this convocation. <laughs> These are amazing men and women who I had the privilege of learning with at Eden and continue to learn with from all their spaces around the world. And you're going to talk to people who reside everywhere from New Zealand to Kenya, all the way here. So from around the world, we get to listen to what it means to do this work. We are not alone. And that is gospel. Mary, any anything you want to say more? This is a conversation on Eden's impact and global solidarity and the conversation partners in this session will be Reverend Dr. Musamina from Kenya, Reverend Gideon Took from the T Solomon Islands, Reverend Henry Mambo of New Zealand, Reverend Nico Sopipa of Fiji, Vicar Alina Velmiro Otu from Indonesia, and Angela Kamuru from Kenya. These six of Eden's many international alumni are of those different graduating years all the way from 2005 to 2018. And they are serving in multiple ministry settings, um, theological education, local and national government posts, pastoral ministry in ecumenical and with interfaith connections, denominational global partnerships, grassroots organizing, girls school chaplaincy, it's amazing. In this conversation, we discussed how each person's experience at Eden Seminary shaped ministry and work in our current contexts. And we asked, what would need to happen for there to be global solidarity around issues that are part of Eden's curricular infused goals? anti-racism and its intersecting oppressions, vocational resilience and interfaith collegiality. So these recorded conversations happened in real time in vastly different time zones. And you're gonna be able to get a glimpse of that from the sunlight in different backgrounds. We invite you in your space into this global conversation. If you are part of this session on Zoom webinar, Please use the chat to greet each other and to comment during the presentation. For those joining by Facebook Live or accessing this recorded session later, use the Facebook comments to do the same. And Dr. Niles and I will return at the end of the recorded conversation for some wrap up. So enjoy. enjoy.
To those who are joining us, welcome to this session of uh, Spring Convocation. I have the ultimate honor of being able to speak to some of our international uh, graduates who are doing powerful things and did powerful things here. We were keen to do this um, simply because we wanted to know how we are connected with the global world and how we contribute and how they contribute to us. We have people all the way from New Zealand um, uh, and to uh, through uh, Kenya um, and those of us in the United States. Thrilled to have all of you with us, uh, those who are watching and those who will be part of this conversation. One of the joys of Eden Seminary is that alumni, uh, are serving in ministry settings all over the world. And so the global solidarity and the global impact is, uh, is real. And so I know that we will get a glimpse of what that impact is just through this conversation. How did your experience at Eden Seminary, what you, what you did as you came and was, were with us, how did that reshape make you rethink or add a new flavor, if you will, to the work you're doing in the spaces you are now. My name is Gideon, I'm from Solomon Islands, and I was at Eden on 2003 up to 2005. I did a MAPS program uh, at that time. Uh, I guess, uh, Having an education in America, and especially Eden, uh, to reflect on the question that was asked is not necessarily, uh, you know, what is, what are you, you learning in the class, but also the environment that, that surrounds you. Uh, that also shapes my learning. So, so I think it's not necessarily, you know, it's the community. My time in America has enabled me to involve a lot better in, in the ministry here in, in Solomon Islands. One example, is, of course, is timing. Um, uh, here in the Solomons, we take things easy. I mean, we, we don't bother about timing. At our local seminary, I focus on things to come on time, and also my current job now in public service. I know that time here, and especially on Zoom, tends to be Kronos time. Some of the rest of us also think about Kairos time. What do yes. you get, what, what, what happens in the interchange between life? And that does not always work on clocks. That's very wise. Nico, Nico Temosopepa, that's my full name. Uh, I'm in Fiji at the moment. I work for the Council for World Mission. When I finished at Eden, I was uh, I, I worked with uh, with Mary's office at uh, Global Ministries, and then I returned to Fiji uh, Mission Islands for eight years. I, I came back to Fiji in 2013. And I became the moderator for the Presbyterian Church. I'm not Presbyterian, but they made me the moderator under contract for six years. We believe in ecumenism. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we then, do. Um, <laughs> since 2019, um, I am the mission secretary for the Pacific of the Council for World Mission. Let me speak of my experience at Eden and how Eden shaped my ministry and my way of thinking. I, I remember that back in 2010, when we first entered Eden, we had a theological shock of our lives, most of us, first students that year, when Professor John Brocky challenged our understanding of the Old Testament. There was Professor Niles, for me personally, apart from uh, Brocky, uh, Professor Brocky, Professor Niles, uh, who encouraged me to think like a Pacific Islander. When I want to write my thesis, I, I want to write on, I forgot what the concept was, but it's something that Karl Barth was doing and Professor and I say, what, why would you want to write on Karl Barth? 
and the Germans can do that better than you. Why don't you write as a Pacific Islander? And I know there's some Western thinker. So when I left Eden, I disagree with most of the things that I believe before I came to Eden. And now in my ministry, I deal with issues of climate change, um, colonialism, deep sea mining, excessive fishing, and uh, the extraction of natural resources uh, from our oceans and, and, and our small islands. Um, our small island nations are vulnerable uh, to the plundering of economic world powers like the United States, um, Australia, European Union, and China, to name a few. And combining the ability to think and believe outside the normative way of thinking and believing, and having these fed up attitudes, which I got from constructive theology, plus a fed up attitude towards Western, white, Northern Hemisphere, privileged theology, I can say that I'm almost an angry theologian at work. I'm angry at the system. And I know that I may not have the power to unwind and reset it, as we say here in Fiji, but at least I can knock a nail in the belly of this system, spilling greed that has pushed many of our people to the face of society. All of those I've learned in the classrooms of India. My name is um, Henry Kondwani Mbambo, that's my full name. And um, we originally come from Zambia, but since leaving Aden, we have found ourselves uh, in New Zealand. So we've been in New Zealand for uh, going into our 13th year now. And um, I am um, now a minister of the Presbyterian Church of Aotearoa, New Zealand. And um, at the moment, I'm in my second placement. Uh, my first placement was um, um, purely a Presbyterian church, but now I'm in what is known as a union church. It is um, a church um, uh, bringing together two traditions, uh, Methodist and Presbyterian. Um, so that's where I'm serving uh, at the moment. At the, at the same time, I'm also an interim um, pastor for another union church, which is composed of um, Presbyterians and uh, Anglicans. Um, <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what I'm doing at the moment. Being an international student at um, Eden, I saw myself joining other international students as well as um, um, local students. And that um, helped my life experience really to be enlarged and enriched in many ways, uh, being exposed to um, to theological views that I was not exposed to in my um, undergraduate um, um, training. As I said, um, um, I am in an ecumenical context in many ways. And um, that is something that I looked forward to. Um, I have come across a video that a friend of mine took at my graduation and um, the notes that were read out about me which um, talked about what I was looking at going into the future I said that I wanted to work in an ecumenical environment and this is um, where I am um, at the moment so as I said Eden played a huge role in enlarging my theological worldview and introduced me to issues of um, social justice. Um, uh, I said earlier on uh, that um, not only am I a minister in a local church, I also work with the national office uh, looking at the training of ministers. We, um, we look at candidates who are coming into the ministry and working with local churches in trying to encourage young people and um, everyone else who would like to go, go into ministry, we work with, um, with those people. Um, so it has been quite enriching um, uh, in my experience of church in New Zealand. 
uh, you may remember that two years ago in New Zealand, there was um, a shooting of worshippers in a mosque um, and the town where that happened is just about an hour from where we are. Wow. And um, as it happened that day, I had a hospital appointment on that day and um, the, the car park that I was, I had my car parked is just next to the mosque where the shootings um, um, happened and um, you, you know that 51 um, um, worshippers were, were killed. In the last two years, the government has been working with, uh, uh, with faith communities uh, to see how we can um, um, work as one community. And so the Presbyterian Church actually asked me to represent the, de the denomination working with the government on those, on those matters. And uh, we have just produced um, um, a report um, through the, the Royal Commission that was appointed by the government, um, uh, potentially going, uh, going forward. Um, I might be um, an advisor to, to, to the Royal Commission uh, that the government has put in place, which will be an ongoing um, uh, Royal Commission working on um, matters of um, um, religious violence and um, um, integration of um, um, various communities and, um, and, and cultures. Um, so that, that, that's what um, I, would, um, I would share with, uh, with everyone. My name is Elena and I graduated from Eden in 2017. Um, I truly love the progressive uh, theological theology that, is, uh, that was taught at Eden because uh, it was truly shaped my um, identity as a young theologian now because uh, I used to, I mean, afraid to go to the street and campaign for humanity or say something for justice like that. But at Eden, I experienced a lot of things. Um, at the classroom, we share um, ideas, we share hope, even when people were um, debating on a topic and have um, um, like disagree with each other, but we did that without immediate, um, intimidating others and then um, the social work uh, that was embedded in many uh, class materials um, I I love that because when I uh, wrote my thesis um, on uh, human trafficking I thought that oh I couldn't just like writing something but all the theology that I have learned at Eden and the social work, uh, I have to apply that in my own context. And when I get home, I, uh, I go back to my home country and then I start to um, engage with an NGO that I have um, said before is Indonesian Women's Network and there I got a lot of chance to meet personally with uh, migrant workers and I know their struggles and I know their hope and then now especially in the pandemic during this pandemic uh, there are lots of migrant workers who return home so we never expect this will be happen but as um, as um, church people like us we have to uh, we have to receive these people and help them to find alternative jobs that they can do. So at Eden, I learned that theology is not only about praying, praising, and like, um, or just do something um, through our words, but also through our actions. And that's what I'm doing now in my church. I truly love 
also the hunger work. The hunger work, um, it's inspired me to, um, to join with a community called Eco School Indonesia. We are doing eco justice theology and also we try to encourage and motivate young people to um, eat uh, nutritious, uh, nutritious food because hunger is not only about lacking the food, but also what kind of food that we eat every day and it influence our health. And if we get a uh, good health, then I think our spirituality will be um, good also. I learned at Eden, it's about learning theology through arts and our traditional cultures. So now I'm still uh, teaching like young uh, children to dance, not, not every week, but in um, like in, uh, in the week that is an uh, important moment, then we can do that dance together. My name is Angela Kamuyu. I'm from Kenya. I left uh, Eden in 2018. And currently back in Kenya, I'm working under the Presbyterian Church of East Africa. And I'm doing a chaplaincy now in school. And that is secondary school. And uh, what I can say coming to the US, was a big opportunity and an eye opener, especially to me, uh, in the sense that it gave me much exposure to be able to learn and also acquire more knowledge. And from the learning materials and events uh, that I, I, was, I was able to have at Eden, it has helped me in my current job as a chaplain uh, to develop student programs that uh, uh, successfully help them to have worldviews in terms of uh, reinforcing intercultural uh, maturity when they are going out of school and joining international colleges and universities in the world. And that has helped them to be able to interact with other students without fear and also accept what I can say in terms of understanding around the context of uh, uh, religion, gender, race, and uh, social class, ethnicity, ethnicity, among us other things. So I can say the opportunity uh, at Eden has given me the exposure to improve and also help other young the students, especially the girls, because I'm in a girls' school, to be able to adapt when they're out there and when they're interacting with other people, not only from their own country, but also uh, students from other countries and also in terms of getting exposure to other educational uh, materials that not necessarily that they're in our country. So it has been beneficial to me to help even in the government body of the school that I'm serving in. So I really appreciate the effort and the time and also to adapt in the system that is there. Yes, my name is um, Musa Maina. Um, I left Eden in 2005. I am a contemporary to Gideon and he was my best friend, I remember and glad to see him, but also to see you, uh, Dr. Niles. It has been uh, a long time. But in terms of our experience, I would want to say that I came to Eden uh, not knowing much of what I was entering into. Of course, I came from my own space and I, there are certain uh, uh, views that I held so dearly but I realized that being at Eden, there was a lot that I had to learn in a very short time. Meeting new people um, in a new context, in a new space. And uh, other than that is that, uh, again, 
uh, meeting the faculty and and the interactions that we had. One thing that I must say is that it was um, a community that was very supportive. That sometimes I look back and I say, if it was not for that, I don't know how we would have made it some of us. But then again, um, in terms of uh, theological engagements in class and all that, there was something else that really I found very interesting. Uh, first of all, it was very scary because I think uh, it was about unblocking that which I thought was everything that I knew. And in terms of engagement in class and all that challenging the worldviews that we held dearly, for the first time that was very scary because I wasn't sure what I was going to go back with. But I, after some time, I learned a lot to, you know, respect each other, to not to impose ourselves on other peoples, but to give people opportunity to bring what they what they knew into onto the table, get challenged, reassess, and think about where you're coming from. I remember I was a student mostly of uh, uh, Dr. Steve Patterson. And he would actually challenge us to tell us, leading us to read those areas of text that were least understood, meaning actually going to the unknown. And, I, and that was really very, you know, uh, I must say being at Eden gave me an opportunity, a new, new lenses of actually reading the Bible. And I found myself uh, looking back again the way I've understood before and the new way of actually looking, getting new lenses to look at some of the areas that we, I thought I, I, I knew. And that went on mm -hmm. until I graduated. By the time I was graduating, I knew that uh, there was a lot of work that needed to be done in terms of where, where we've come from in my own context, especially in my denomination, which on matters gender equity, maybe this equity, if there is such a term. <laughs> and when I came back, I got the opportunity to be the moderator of the church. And I thought that was very strategic. And one of the things I thought again, to look at, to help the, 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 the church look at um, the things that they have held before, issues of women ordination, issues of women finding place in the structures of the church. And, and so I, we did that and we moved on, we challenged ourselves, we challenged our structures. We revisited actually the text that we thought actually were, were telling us to do certain things in certain ways and discovered that, you know, that was not all that the text was saying. It was also about where we are coming from, who trained us, the inculcation that we received from the missionaries, and also that there were other voices that were actually suppressed or rather muted within actually the text. And that gave us a new world of looking at things. And um, we struggled for almost, I think, eight years before then, again, we realized that there was much space that we could look at things. And by 2017, we had actually the consensus that actually women ought to have been actually ordained. And we had the first woman ordained in our church in 2019. Uh, so for me, having been at Eden was actually about looking at the lens through which we, we read the Bible, we interpret, and what does it mean actually for the community that we, we, we are serving. Um, maybe another thing again that I have come to appreciate is the fact that biblical texts and contexts are not actually read from a vacuum. We, we stand in spaces either of power or of disempowerment. And I think many of many people struggle to bring their voices actually to, 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 to bear. For a long time, we've only listened to those who can speak, to those who have power. But I think time has come also for those who come from marginal areas, geopolitical spaces that they actually bring theirs to the table as well. And so for me, I think I look at Eden and I, I look at the question of colonialism in the context where I come from and the legacy that is still there and the need actually to unbank that 
so that we have a better opportunity of actually looking at scriptures afresh and interpreting them to the advantage of actually the communities and the churches whom we are called actually to serve. So there is a new world ever since I came from Eden, a new world that I feel called to share with my colleagues to challenge the worldviews that they have held dearly, being sensitive um, to who, we, 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 who surrounds us and allowing actually people to, to speak and more so to listen. And also the whole exposure, the connect, being connected globally is also another thing. We, yes, we are in a particular context, reading texts in our context, but also being aware of actually the fact that we are in a global, a global world and to appreciate the beauty that comes with that. And I think that is what actually Eden actually, uh, it's actually the gift that I brought from Eden. I, I went with my lenses, but they gave me actually new lenses, uh, which I endeavor to share with the people I serve all the time. And so looking at where I come from, I think that I appreciate and I owe it to Eden. Um, my, um, uh, my own father would always say, always be context specific, never be context confined. Yes. Um, and I see that in yes, every exactly. one of you. Uh, it, it's, it does my yes. heart good to see the faces in this space. Uh, though far away you are. There are many curses that came with the pandemic, but this is gift. The work that you do uh, changes the world. I don't think Eden necessarily changes the world, but their Eden's encounter with you and changes the world. Eden in the curriculum, we are focusing on anti-racism and other oppressions. We are focusing on ecumenical and interfaith collegiality. We're focusing on vocational resilience. Uh, you all are living each of those every day. Um, just, we'll just open this up to how, what, what do you think needs to be in place for there to be global solidarity on any or all of these? From a, a specific point of view, I'm, I'm very specific, I'm specific here. Uh, it is the idea of relationality from a specific way of thinking. The concept of relationality or being in relationship is, is, is founded on mutual respect for the other. It challenges the often stereotypical uh, concept of absolute truth which to me has been a major dividing factor in many underlying problems that we have today. It is when we begin to think that our race, our way of thinking or our belief, be it religious or cultural belief, is the absolute truth. We are already erecting dividing walls between us and those who we think do not belong. So relationality acknowledges the other, and also it recognizes our incapability or the incapability of self, thus the need for the other. And in relationality, uh, humans are not the crown of God's creation. It's the reinterpreting, not only of theology, but reinterpreting and rereading of the scripture um, that humans, we are not the crown of God's creation, but we are part of a whole creation. So therefore, in some of the things that we do here in the Pacific, in, in our theologizing, we challenge the theological separation of anthropology and ecology, especially in the light of climate change and what we see around us. We believe in relationality that when we have a good grasp of our being a part of all there is, we will begin to disturb and interrupt stratified systems that divides. Not only that, we will also begin to fully appreciate the differences we have and how those differences fits well to make a whole. Lastly, before I go, I would like to say that relationality for us is communal. When we were at Eden, we would share the Ugali together. 
uh, we would eat at uh, restaurant comments uh, room and then we moved to Agrippa and Natila's room, Sally Two's room. Uh, we move around and we share for the international students. And we speak about communal against individualistic. So while relationality is communal, at the same time, it has respect for individuality. But it has no respect at all for individualism. That means relationality respects and acknowledges the differences we have. It does not support the idea of one man for himself or one woman for himself or in the question of interfaith, collegiality, it does not mean support one God for God's help. This, this conversation that is created by Eden and we are writing now is, is one of the global solidarity, I suppose. Uh, uh, people from different world, we are coming around in using the available technology and we share stories and experiences. The church is, is one, one of the... the the organization globally that, that, that can speak together, stand together through prayer and, and organized programs that we will be able to be in solidarity with issues like racism. I shared earlier about um, uh, the unfortunate um, um, violence that happened two years ago here. And um, clearly, if you um, follow the discussions that have been going on. There was, in many ways, um, um, tons of racism that um, that led to um, to the killing of of those um, worshippers. And um, while it was said that. Um, um, New Zealand was shocked to, to, to have that event or tragedy happening. Uh, I would say in many ways, um, though it wasn't expected, it was bound to happen because of seeing people who are different and um, looking at um, such people as not being the same as us. And this is where I, I, I want to, um, to start from. When I came to the USA in 2006, um, that was the first time I saw myself as a minority. Um, and being part of um, uh, the African American student body then, I got to um, uh, learn of the struggles, uh, for example, that um, uh, African Americans were experiencing. I was uh, thankful that I was embraced by the African American students and made an honorary member of that community. And, uh, and so I saw how that part of the body of Christ um, was struggling when it came to issues of, um, of racism. Mm -hmm. And I remember obviously doing a course with um, uh, Dr. Niles on constructive theology. One of the things that has stuck with me from that course, um, Dr. Niles, is how you emphasized um, the question of um, uh, the image of God in human beings, the imago Dei, as you, 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 you used to say. Um, I think if we realized and knew that every human being bears the image of God, our treatment of other people will be, uh, will be different. Um, I think we treat others as being less because we do not recognize and accept the image of God in, 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 in other people. What we forget, in my view, is that the moment we lessen the, 
um, the image of God in other people, we are actually lessening our own, um, our own understanding of who God is. Um, the, the, the tragedy is we don't realize that um, we become less human if we do not recognize the humanity of others. And borrowing from my Zambian and Southern African um, um, culture, um, we have um, a worldview we call Ubuntu. I know Ubuntu um, in some other circles, it's, um, it's a computer program, but um, <laughs> Ubuntu says you are, therefore I am. And because I am, you are. We see our identity in each other. So that's, that is where um, I would say racial uh, solidarity has to be grounded in the image of God, as well as in each other's um, 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 humanity. If we can only appreciate the image of God in all human beings, we will treat each other um, with dignity and, um, and respect. Here in New Zealand, um, um, racism is not easily talked about, but it is present. Um, the example that I gave of the shootings that happened in Christchurch, um, sadly the, uh, the events happened in, in, in a town that uh, is called Christchurch. <laughs> um, there were racist undertones to it, everything that was happening there. And what we are doing presently as faith um, uh, and community leaders is to start educating um, not only the young people, but even um, older people, educating them about the need of accepting each other's uh, humanity. We can be, uh, Ha be having a different um, uh, pigment, so to say, but at the end of the day, underneath our skin, we are all human beings. If we can only um, uh, remember this. So um, again, going back to what I said earlier on, my time at Eden helped me to open my eyes a little bit wider, having realized that for the first time I was part of the minority group. And I realized that um, if you are in the minority, there are a lot of struggles that you, um, uh, you have to go through, which means we have to embrace those people we consider to be uh, in the minority group and we must remember that Christ actually came for those who were on the margin of, of our societies. And if we are to do a good job, we must be willing to go to the margin uh, of our societies and embrace those that we consider to be um, in the minority. I'm feeling like we have a sermon with every uh, buddy's yes. uh, testimony and witness. This is beautiful. Well, so brilliant you can put and maybe you were the nico's conversation with henry's conversation because you're seeing from two different spaces doing similar things in their contextually language and space and and bodies i think that's brilliant we are we are actually one i think uh, the god whom we all believe is big enough to accommodate all of us with our flaws with our diversities and we are all in this. Uh, and I think we, are, we struggle in our own spaces, but I think we need to, 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 to have that connectivity uh, so that we create a space where we share the struggles that we, we are dealing with uh, every day. 
um, where we can bring our stories, put them on the table and do some reflections actually together. Because I think being called to be, to be believers, a community of believers means actually that we are called, we are called actually to be part of uh, the a movement that is called actually to, uh, to transform lives. Um, I think one thing that I, I also must have borrowed it, I think from Eden, is actually having a serious scholarship, you know, a critical uh, reading of contents. And so much so that scholarship is not actually remaining at an ivory tower. It is actually bringing that into the church, into the context. It is about having that engagement uh, so that um, we are able actually mm -hmm. to help people uh, transform their context, transform the structures that are invisible but have serious effects on the people. Uh, we are talking about even globalization and the effects and the way a lot of people are struggling and not knowing actually what is actually affecting them. So for me, I think that critical lenses of actually reading context is very critical. And when we come together, when we are aware that we, we are a big team, I think that is much that we can actually do. Um, I know that um, from the time I left Eden, um, Deb uh, uh, and mother have come with actually students actually to Kenya for contextual education. And there's a lot that I wouldn't say that they have learned, but I think also the, the, the members of the Kenyan communities have learned actually from them. And there is that knowledge that is so much that creates the awareness of the different spaces where people come from. And so apart from matters racism, I think we have all these other matters as well that we struggle with. Uh, you know, engaging the, the structures that are in place. Some are very intact. And I can give an example, for, for instance, in this part of our space here, we think colonialism ended when we got independence, but the structures are still intact. And the, that legacy, the struggles that we, we have even today that, you know, talking about exploitation, we're talking about marginalization. All those who are grounded during that time. But we need actually to have those critical lenses of actually reading context. And I think that can come if we are in solidarity. And I agree with, um, with our friend who just spoke about Henry. knowing that we are one, you know, <laughs> we are one. We, we are because the other team are, and our God is big enough to accommodate all of us with all our diversities and also our flaws notwithstanding. I remember um, uh, one, uh, an international student that was not in this room after, um, after listening to some lectures, met me in the hallway and pointed to his head and he goes, do you see this? And I said, yes. And he said, this is now a decolonized mind. This mind that came colonized is going back to decolonize. <laughs> right. Then we have done our jobs together well, my friends. For me, global solidarity is a commitment to be in a connection or relationship with others. And in our relationship, we acknowledge that uh, everybody has um, strengths and weaknesses, but no one is superior than others. And because of that, we are freely to uh, share our struggles and then our strengths to support each other. And in my experience, when I, um, be in, when I was in conversation with my Eden uh, classmates or friends, I learned to speak up my voice because as somebody who came from um, a colonial country like me, Sometimes it was very difficult for me to speak because of the language struggles. And also there was always in my mind that I should listen to others. 
especially for the seniors. I have to listen to them first. And, but then I learned that everybody has something to be shared on the table. And because of that, I think um, that the solidarity that we can um, achieve together is about, it's also about how we find our common uh, goal, which is um, to work together towards uh, justice. And also, what are the problems that we experience? Maybe the common problems for us in Asia is like um, poverty, uh, land grabbing, forest uh, degradation, and other problems that in each country, um, this problem maybe has different form. But then we can do something locally with the same goal to uh, save our land our, and our people. I can say on uh, about uh, the risk of global solidarity. And as my colleagues have spoken, I can say it's a moment of um, trying to identify and listening and more so learning from our brothers and sisters in their different contexts. And uh, when we do that, we come to understand our brokenness. And in the moment of understanding how we are broken, we realize that that is when we stand a divided humanity. And for us to be able to come together and join other cultures, other people in their various forms uh, of how they're experiencing racism and other uh, difficulty in terms of identity also, we can say it's a moment as a church to speak the voice of the prophet. And the voice of the prophet is to say that we have to confess and also repent and share our brokenness. And when we share our experiences, as we are hearing from my colleagues from all over the world and even my uh, country, I can say it's a moment to renew, uh, uh, renew our commitment and to work for that freedom that is uh, that brings about the wholeness of the people. And when I'm talking about the people, I'm talking about uh, binding together the leaders and putting aside our differences that is really separating <coughs> us, not only in terms of uh, the geographical space, uh, in terms of our, our physical appearances or any other way, but it will be able for us to accommodate each other and learn, and in that space we are closing the gap and be able to put the power of love into action and logics so that we can be able to liberate both the oppressed and the oppressor because all are talking of their own space and how they are really feeling they are not getting what they want. I hope that we are feeling part of this global solidarity challenge uh, that our, our colleagues uh, around the world are giving. And in this particular conversation, uh, I am so grateful to each of you for the ways that you are encouraging and challenging uh, each other and all of us. Vocational um, resilience. Um, I would say that what Eden is doing um, is a huge contribution, um, enlarging our theological worldviews, so to say, uh, makes a huge contribution towards our vocational um, resilience. And we should encourage one another um, to have a continued appetite for learning. I'm so glad to have met you all, especially to see uh, Professor Miles again. Yeah. Uh, um, good to see you, Mary. Musa, I met Musa when he came to Eden. Uh, in 2012 as a visiting uh, Greek lecturer, I think. And, uh, my colleagues, uh, fellow uh, alumni, I'm so glad to see you. I am so grateful to see each of your faces because my heart feels a little bit, no, a lot bigger in this moment. Um, sometimes you forget how much you miss 
people until you see them again. And I miss all of you. I'm so grateful to each and every one of you. Well, we are grateful that uh, you all were able to be part of this conversation and it is recorded and we will be able to have it available to you for continued um, engagement uh, with these brilliant theologians and contextual engagement uh, activities. Um, some of the things that I heard in these conversations uh, expressions of the importance of the Eden community in that educational experience. Um, I heard the instigation of new theological imaginations and the cultivation of being immersed in one's own context and knowing the importance of that. Um, I heard the importance of academic study from the point of view of those contexts. And I heard that we don't always know when we're going to be called upon to be prophetic but that we can be prepared. Like Reverend Henry in New Zealand in the midst of the aftermath of the bombing and killing of worshipers in a mosque in New Zealand, of Reverend Nico's ongoing advocacy for the environment wrapped in a theology of relationships that emerges from Fiji and the Pacific Islands, of Reverend Gideon serving in local government alongside his pastoral duties, Dr. Musamina in his scholarship advocating for the leadership of women in the church, Vicar Alina working with victims of human trafficking in Indonesia, and Angela empowering girls and young women in Kenya. I am inspired and grateful for this solidarity. I was thinking, I am wise because I salam in this wisdom. One of the many gifts of being at Eden is learning from what uh, Nico said, theological luminaries that walk and breathe in our midst. And to be reminded again, what Dr. Patterson told us just yesterday, being one is to be in solidarity. Eden is not serving the world community. It is in partnership with the world to learn and grow. And um, re-listening to this, just emotionally powerful, amazing. This is why we do our work. That I think this is why, um, I will confess, I met Mary Shaula Blaufus in India, working with the luminaries there and now get to work with her here with these people. This is what we were made to do. This wonderful, global, complex, prophetic, pastoral work. I think that's just amazing. So thanks to each of you again for being part of Eden Seminary Spring Convocation. This 2021, this is what theology looks like. Resisting domination and finding resilience, the church in solidarity for justice. A reminder that past sessions in worship are recorded and posted, and you can find them on the Eden website or on the Facebook page. And we really do want to encourage you to use these resources in your contexts of ministry. We also want to um, invite you to the next session of Spring Convocation, which will be this evening at 5.30 Central Time. And we are going to continue uh, a conversation with luminaries. These, this conversation with alumni who live in the United States uh, who are engaged in public square theologies, so grassroots organizing, legislative advocacy, uh, elected officials. And so hope that you will be part of that. Our 50th anniversary class will be meeting after that for a time of reunion. And tomorrow at noon will be our concluding worship service 
with the preacher being uh, Corey Lovell, who is the recipient of this year's Senior Preaching Award. And he has pulled together many students uh, to participate in the worship leadership of this event. And you will want to be part of that worship service. The music is going to be incredible. So thank you again. Please do uh, take some time to complete the survey that is in the JOT form that is shared in the chat on both Zoom and on Facebook. This really helps us as we continue uh, to learn and to grow uh, and to be Eden Seminary together. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.